All right, guys, my brother brought me his 2011 Outback for an oil change. And I remember back this summer, we did a torque converter and valve body replacement on this car due to failure of both. And he's been complaining that the CVT is possibly slipping. So we're gonna go test drive it and see if we can see what's going on there. And uh, just looked underneath after doing the oil change and the factory head gaskets are still hanging in there on this old EJ253. Let's see if we can put some light up in here. Uh, passenger side. Little focus. Still dry. And driver's side. Oh, come on. It's still dry, no external oil leaks or coolant leaks, and I believe we're at 215,000 miles. So let's go ahead, get this thing off the ramps, go test drive, and see what's up with this uh, CVT. All right, guys, a little correction. 205,000 miles, not 215. We're going to go for a test drive now. They've changed the oil, checked tire pressures, topped off fluids, and see what he's talking about, this possible CVT chain slip issue. Pretty aggressive on the acceleration because if the chain's gonna slip, it's gonna slip under more heavy acceleration than say, uh, you know, normal acceleration. But my normal is probably grandma speed to a lot of you viewers out there. I drive a lot more conservatively in my Subarus than I do say my Duramax or uh, the way I did in my old LS powered Corvettes, Camaros, GTO, etc. So no chain slip noted there. We don't have a check engine light. I'm not sure exactly what it is he's feeling. Haven't talked to him. He drops the car off to me, leaves money in it. I work on it and he picks it up later. So my mother is kind of our middle person, so to say. He tells her what's going on and she tells me. So like a game of telephone, sometimes it's uh, misconstrued along the way because he claimed that the CVT was slipping, uh, yet somewhere along the line he put fuel treatment in there and said that uh, he wasn't finding the issue anymore. So we're just gonna go on a quick little test drive, see what it's gonna do. Likely if there is chain slippage, it'll do it when it's cold. Now that the car is up to operating temperature, he did drive it a good 15, 20 minutes down to where I'm at. Uh, so likely we're not gonna experience any chain slip if there is chain slip, but I'm gonna, still gonna test drive it, see if I see anything. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if chain slip will throw a check engine light. I would assume it would. There's gotta be some code for uh, speed variation between input and output, uh, you know, indicative of what would happen during a chain slippage event where your input pulley would uh, break traction from the chain and accelerate faster in line with the engine acceleration than the output to the prop shaft and the front differential. I've seen plenty of videos online of people that have experienced chain slip. You normally hear a very loud screeching sound and the engine RPM jumps, much like you would have with a slipping clutch on a manual transmission equipped vehicle. I have never personally experienced CVT chain slip in a vehicle, either mine or a customer's vehicle. So that's why I'm recording now, just so I can capture it if it does happen to happen, uh, just for you viewers to see. So as I said, everything's fine so far, no check engine light. Um, either it's slipping very mildly enough where it won't throw a check engine light, or he's thinking that the transmission is slipping when it's actually something else. It, it, it kind of confuses me why he would put fuel treatment in the engine if he thought the transmission was slipping. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe one of, uh, maybe the serpentine belt squealing on him. Maybe something's going on when it's cold. I don't know, but I'm gonna about 
to be to a stop sign here. We'll pull back out on the main highway, accelerate kind of rapidly. Again, I'm not gonna beat on his car. We're just gonna accelerate to a point where if the chain was gonna slip, it should slip. So again, being up to temp doesn't help us here in diagnosing this if it is an issue, because likely it's only an issue that occurs when the CVT fluid is cold. So let's accelerate here. Steady acceleration, not sensing any issues. Looks like we're good. I'll just have to get him to, you know, monitor the issue and come back to me if he has any other concerns with it. Um, I was thinking that, you know, this is a possibility at 200,000 miles or 190,000 miles, somewhere in that range this summer, we did a valve body, we did a torque converter, and we did a whole ton of new fluid in this CVT. Now, the problem with waiting so long to replace the CVT fluid is that just like a regular automatic transmission, the longer you go between intervals on changing your fluid, the more and more particulates build up in that fluid. Now, those particulates in a normal automatic transmission, a conventional, you know, it thickens the fluid, same as it does in the CVT, but it gives you some grit because of that friction material breaking off of the uh, clutch packs, you know, it gives grit to the fluid and when you change that fluid after it's gone for so long, you lose all that grit and all that friction modifier, so to say. And that's when normally you'll see a slippage of a conventional automatic transmission. So in theory, replacing CVT fluid that hasn't been touched for over 100,000 miles and putting new CVT fluid in it could work the same way as, as the metal chain rolls across the metal variators, some material is gonna come off and get suspended in the fluid. You replace that fluid with new fluid and you've lost that friction modifier and your chain is now riding metal on metal variators with nice clean fluid without that media suspended in the fluid that acts as a friction modifier to help give that chain extra grip on those variators. So very likely you could have chain slip if you wait too long before you do your first CVT fluid service. So it's good to go ahead and start servicing at three or 36,000 mile intervals from new on your CVT to avoid that kind of issue. So we're back now to my farm. I'm gonna say we have no transmission issues here. Just let him drive it and see what's going on and possibly record what he thinks this issue is. If it acts up the way he thinks it's acting up for him to record it and uh, have me something to see because it function perfectly normally here on our test drive. All right, guys, so I was able to talk to my brother after the test drive, and he thinks honestly that something was going on with the engine, which would make sense that uh, putting fuel injection cleaner in it would clear it up. Uh, probably got some bad gas somewhere, or maybe he had an injector that was uh, partially clogged or something. Don't know, just told him to drive it, and if anything else comes up, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry I couldn't show you actual CVT chain slip, uh, but maybe we'll find a case of it sooner than later. And, uh, you know, I'll see you guys in the next video.